Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I hope everything's okay in your life. In this video, I will try to convey the changes that have come to Drukania class. I will also share my experiences regarding how Drukania has been affected by these changes. To be honest, I was expecting a nerf for heal, but the protection nerfs have deeply impacted the class. Without further ado, let's take a look at the changes. Okay, firstly, I would like to talk about the very old nerfs that have come up, so you will be able to understand what changed in total in the class in last year. We can say that the Drakana class has received three major nerfs overall. The first one consisted of changes aimed at weakening several aspects but not profoundly shaking the class. The damage of obliterate skill was reduced by about 20%. Your landings nerfed to not be instant. This was essentially a delayed addition of something that should have been in the game initially. They thought that in order to use skills like WRMB, Shift LMB while in flight mode, the flight had to stop first and then skill could be used. The main purpose of this nerf was to prevent the desync that occurs in the game and also to make this movement for your opponents more predictable. Of course, a disadvantage of this was that the duration you made defenseless after the flight end was also extended. So the movement in these skills in the flight mode, they just turn into some kind of clanky mobility but it was okay. Another change affected the healing aspect. The heal skill was buggy and sometimes restored over 50% HP. This was quite frustrating and it was fixed. Additionally, some powerful heals such as Doombringer and Sundering Roar were nerfed. Another nerf affected mobility. The stamina restoration during the use of shift LMB skills was eliminated. The purpose here was to nerf the skill combination that players discovered due to the spammable of the Hexablood tip of scale skill which offered almost unlimited movements options. You can currently see its nerfed version on the screen. Another nerf was related to the character's DR stacking. There have been significant changes in many classes during the DR and Evasion updates. In Drukania, however, a serious nerf situation has emerged regarding the DR stack. The plus 20 DR buff you received while in the Dragon Blood form has been completely removed. Meanwhile, the plus 20 DR buff from your Q block skill has been reduced to plus 10. So overall, your DR nerfed by 30. The second major nerf was related to the damage nerf of the Dragon Blood skills. The Dragon skills, which allowed the character to maintain super armor while also dealing damage, received about a 30% nerf according to what you see on the screen. These skills were restructured to ensure that you remain in the super armor while dealing very minimal damage. The purpose of this nerf was to reduce the character's effectiveness in large scale scenarios. And not gonna lie, they kinda succeeded it. In the nerfs that preceded this, the aim was to lower the character standing in the meta slightly, which made it appear quite weak in comparison. Following this damage nerf, the character's explosive power in particular large scale battles was significantly reduced. The majority of the damage reflected while remaining in super armor being nerfed, further diminishing its standing in meta. So at this point, people started to leave the class slowly. However, it still possessed a very strong aspect, the heal passive. Those who watch my Twitch streams know that through a reasonable nerf to Drukania's healing, the class offensive capabilities could be indirectly weakened and made more balanced. As I mentioned, this indeed occurred. The heal received a nerf as you can see on the screen. Each healing charge rate, which operates a percentage, was converted into a fixed number. While this might not seem like a significant nerf at first glance, it was actually quite serious. It was precisely the type of a nerf I had anticipated. You can currently see on the screen how much healing skills used to provide and how much they provide after the nerf. These values are calculated based on 9k maximum HP before the HP change and 12k maximum HP after the HP change. For a hard cap Drukania, these values are the average. The 6 skills within the skill set are our fundamental healing skills. The skills will not activate at all when your HP is below 50%. You can see the changes on the screen. Despite the increasing HP amounts, there is a significant decrease in the total healing amount. Because of the HP changes, your HP pool is just got bigger, but your heal nerfed heavily compared to that one. Frankly, this healing nerf feels quite reasonable to me. It was as I expected because the healing advantage previously provided a serious aggressive playstyle. In the current situation, it is indeed very difficult to survive in a crowded places. So far, I have responded positively to all nerves that have come. However, why have so many players suddenly stopped playing the class? None of the nerves I have mentioned so far were 
particularly challenging. At the very last, it could have remained a class where players who were expert in Drukania could still accomplish something, of course, with more limitations. The main reason people are leaving Drukania is due to the protection nerfs. The biggest nerf affecting the Drukania class has become these four super armor changes. On the left side of the screen, you can see two different dragon blood skills. These skills were signature super armor abilities for Drukania. After the damage nerf, the primary purpose of the skills become self-protection and maintaining super armor status. On the right side of the screen, you see two hexa blood skills. Normally, these skills are unprotected. However, they could be chosen as super armor to the core options. In short, the four of super armor options have been changed to front guard. Currently, the character only has four super armor skills left in her 26 active awakening skills. Yes, you heard right, Awakened Rukana skill 3 is bigger than the other classes and you have only four super armor skills. Effectively, there are no usable super armor CC skill available. The Tectonic Slam Hexablood skills can be converted to super armor via core and provide super armor float CC. However, this skill isn't particularly effective for catching opponents and is only preferable in 1v1 scenarios. But even in that scenario, it's still suspicious. If you ask any Drakani about it, they would like to respond that this skill is useless to choose a core. Therefore, we can clearly state that there are serious issues concerning Super Armor CC at this moment. The WE skill in the pre awakening skill 3 has Super Armor Stiffness CC, but it can be quite difficult to continue once you catch someone with this skill. Therefore, we might ignore this skill. On the other hand, the primary purpose of this skill is to maintain Super Armor and provide small amount of mobility. There is a rather amusing situation with the skills converted to Super Armor to Front Guard. When using these skills, the character moves forward. Yes, you heard right, your front guard skills pushing you forward. This means that the skills are not suitable for the provided protection types. Moving forward while only having front guard protection gives your opponent an advantage to catch you. Essentially, when you choose to use these front guard skills, we end up putting ourselves in a difficult position. It means that you're griefing yourself. From these changes, we can understand that the person making these nerves decisions either has no idea about BDO and Drukania or aims solely to weaken the class significantly. Unfortunately, the class currently feels weak. So far, I have explained the nerves the class has received over the past year. The portion leading up to the last protection nerves was quite successful. They were all okay. However, the protection nerves have rendered the class mostly useless. I will now share some of my feelings about the class under a few headings. First, after the damage nerf of Dragon Blood skills, it has become nearly impossible to engage in large scale battles, and bombing them is just turned into some kind of legend. So you should forget about bomb mechanics in your class. The damage nerf on Dragon Blood skills, it definitely felt very bad, but it was okay. As a result of the changes to front guard protection, the gameplay feels of the character has weakened considerably. You feel like you're in the box, but the box is just smaller than your potential. You have 4 super armor skills, but using them leaves you in animation lock. Additionally, their cooldowns are around 9 to 10 seconds. During this downtime, you need to keep moving constantly, especially during the pre awakening phase, you are compelled to use the skills displayed on the screen that are meant for movement. You are having stamina issue because of this forceful situation. When this cycle repeats twice or maybe three times, you find yourself out of stamina and you can get caught easily. This situation truly feels disgusting. With the changes to front guard, the character playstyle has completely transformed into something different. In scenarios like 1v1, classes with block jump can easily dominate you. Any class capable of swiftly maneuvering behind you to quickly apply CC can easily catch you. The four skills you use to maintain super armor create an animation lock situation, openly sending your opponents a signal of, come and grab me my friend. The tectonic slam skill could be considered as a core option, perhaps even usable, maybe it can feel better than shift F or SF, however, that means sacrificing one of your mobility skills for CC purpose might feel a little bit weaker again. Unfortunately, there is nothing to be done about it. I'm sorry. In large scale play, the character feels particularly weak. Playing with the main zerg is almost impossible now. You have no choice but to hunt down individuals you find areas where you don't have flank flex team. Moreover, there are some characters in the game that can play as flanks much more easily and effectively than Rukana. As a result, you may feel quite restricted because of that. Be prepared for this. After some of the Node Wars and Siege, I felt that the only team you will be able to continue is the Flank team. So, I talked about many negative things. Is there any positive things about the class? Yes, we still have something. 
1. You still possess one of the best single target DPS in the game. Yes, it's mostly front guard or maybe unprotected. However, you still have a chance to kill anyone with the right builds in 1v1 scenario. So, damage is not a problem. Your wings are still with you, you can surprise your opponents from a distance and catch them off guard. So you have still pretty good burst mobility. Although the nerf is felt in healing, you can create an opportunity to quickly leave the battlefield and restore your HP. Of course it is harder than before, but it is better than nothing, isn't it? I can still say that you belong to good class in AOS. Of course, it is significantly weakened due to the nerfs. However, thanks to the AP stacking from the passive and weapon stance buff and the 10% crit damage bonus in the passive, you can deal substantial damage when you catch your opponents. Many experienced Rukanias are still challenging others in AOS and achieving good scores. However, it is clear and evident that Rukania is no longer an easy class. Not a meta class and not a pygmy class. She has truly become what we could call very hard type of class. She has turned into a class where, if you invest lots of effort and lots of time, you can achieve results. But do not expect performances in AOS as you did before. You will definitely feel the difference. If your opponent knows your weakness, it will be very very easy for them to catch you or punish you. Otherwise, you will have to play steadily like a guerrilla fighter. You will always need to keep your opponents in front of you. Or, if you cannot manage it, your opponents will easily punish you. If you are curious about the PV, I have just one thing to say to you. Please, find reasonable classes where you can achieve better results with less effort. I really don't want you to spend hundreds of hours just to achieve average results in few sports by putting maximum effort for PV. That's all my general thoughts on Drukania class after changes. My viewers often ask me if I will give up on Drukania. Am I gonna reroll? No, my dear friends. Drukania is my main character. No matter what happens, I love Drukania. I love the game style, the gameplay. I didn't choose this class just because she's strong or she's bad or she's weak or something. Her aspects resonate with me and complete me. Even though she's received nurse, maybe even more. I don't care. I will continue to have fun and enjoy the game with Drukania by harnessing her maximum performance. By the way, the real challenge starts right now, isn't it? So what you think about the changes under Drukania? I would love to hear what you think. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I really like to read your thoughts in the comment section. For this video, I'm done. I hope you guys like my contents. Do not forget. Video is just a game. Have a nice game.